Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at adding shingles to a roof. So I've seen this question come up quite a few times, and it actually came up in a live model that happened as of this filming just recently. Um, but I wanted to talk about using components and, and just quick... It's, it's not, it seems like a complicated process and actually goes pretty quick. So I want to take a look at, at doing that. So we're going to right now hop into adding shingles to a roof. Let's go. All right. So for the first thing I want to do is bring up paint bucket. Uh, and then in paint bucket, I'm going to go to roofing right here and grab this shingle roof material and apply it like that. So if you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And no, I'm just kidding. We're going to jump in and actually talk about not doing just this, but actually modeling the geometry of the shingles in the roof. Let's jump back in. Okay, I'm going to undo and exit this group. So right here, I just have this uh, simple roof geometry. Now, you know, it's basically I wanted a big slab to take a look at here and as far as how we're going to do this. What I would do, this, if I had to come in and lay down roof tiles, or, or roof shingles, um, I would probably start by doing them flat on the ground here and then tip them up onto the roof. This is just gonna make it a little bit easier. I'm not trying to do it on top of this, this uh, overlap right here. So here's how I would go about doing this. And then I wanna say this too, like if I had a roof that was just asphalt shingles laying down, then I probably would use a material. Asphalt shingles are so thin and they actually wrap over each other to create a fairly consistent flat roof that modeling them is rather difficult because the profile was actually going to go flat and then kind of go up over the next piece. So um, if I was doing asphalt channels, I wouldn't bother. If I was doing some kind of like flat clay tile or, uh, you know, like wood shingles, then then I would go through this process I'm about to look at here. All right. So first thing I would do is I would start with a rectangle. Um, I will let you guys come up with the specific size of the rectangle. It's really not going to make a difference uh, how big it is, how deep it is, how long it is. The process that I'm going to go through is going to be the same regardless of the shape of the shingle itself. So I'm going to grab this shingle and I'm going to make it a component and I'm going to call it shingle because I'm good about naming my components. I'm actually not very good, so that's why I'm, I'm doing that. All right, so I'm going to option copy that, not butting up like this. The whole purpose of this is to get detail into our 3D model, so I'm going to actually come over here. I'm going along the red axis, and I'm going to come just with, leave a little bit of a gap like that. I'm going to type 20x, enter. Okay, so I got a good long, this, this is way too many, actually. I could, I could probably drop that back by quite a few. All right, and now I'm going to take all of those tiles, and I'm not going to group them together, but I'm just going to select them together. I'm going to draw one line right here, midpoint of this tile to midpoint of this tile. Then I'm going to take all these selected tiles and move them from the midpoint of this end tile. My modifier key to copy and place it at the middle of that point right there. See that? All right. Now I'm going to do one more, one more midpoint line right here. I'm going to grab all of these. And I'm going to move that from the midpoint of this tile. There we go. Modifier key to copy and drop that again on this piece, right in the middle of that piece. And I'll make several copies there. Maybe we say 10x. That's more than enough. All right. So there I have shingles laying down. You notice they're not flat because each one, each one of these flat rows of shingles steps up onto the next one. This is the reason I did it on, on the ground. So I want this. The actual plane that is going to be laying flat to the surface is this line right here. So we want to grab all of these shingles now and lay it flat so that this line is right here. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to grab everything. I will pick it up. I'm going to grab it by this point right here. And I'm going to drop that right on the corner. Then I'm going to rotate. Everything's still selected. It doesn't actually matter which piece I rotate, but I'm going to grab the back end of another shingle and rotate that up so it's on the line of the roof. All right, there we go. Looking cool. Um, obviously, we've got to do a little trimming here. I'm going to 
say take this piece right here and slide it this way on the red axis over to this line. And I could do a couple things to trim here. So these guys right here, all these guys hanging out here, I could do one of two things. I could scale them. I could just grab them and I could squish them back and call that good enough. And they're on the edge, they're cut, they're short, that's perfect. The problem with that is if I come in and put a material on here, something, anything other than a solid color, is these ones are gonna be distorted and squished. So what I might do instead is grab them and make them unique. So you can see that this is now shingle number one. And I could go into one of these, push, pull, that back like that. And now that surface, get rid of that, is actually pulled back. I'll do the same thing over here on this side. I'm sorry, Naraj, you gotta go. Uh, I'm gonna grab everything from here on over. Like that, delete that. And then we'll grab these ones right here, make them unique. Also, and when you have multiple items and you hit, hit make unique, it makes all of them unique together. And then I can go into one and I pull that back like that. All right, so this one is a little bit short. I made I may be worth going and grabbing these and making them just slightly longer or shifting them over to make them align, but you got the idea there. All right, so then let's see up to here. We got those. And then same thing can happen up here at the peak. I could make these unique or I could grab these and just they're, they're only they don't go back very far, but uh maybe I will do that. I'll grab these guys right here, make unique, and then grab one of them, push, pull that back to here. And unfortunately that means I'm gonna have two more make unique. Uh, when you do something like this, you will end up with a lot of extra tile, uh, unique instances. Um, oop, we can do the same thing down here at the end. I'll just grab these guys right here, delete them. Right. So there we go that's everything's on there um you will notice that this first one bucks up a little bit again because the way they lay over each other so i have a couple of, i could grab this last row and rotate it so it's down flat like this if i wanted to it's going to look a little bit different but it's probably more realistic about how that would actually lay you could leave it up like this you could Bring your fascia up. You could do whatever you want to do to make that look the way you want it to. Uh, you can add that in there. But with that, pretty quick, just a couple of minutes, we put a bunch of tiles on that roof, a bunch of shingles, and we actually have geometry for those pieces. So that was, like I said, quick, very simple roof, of course, just, just, a, just laying it flat out there. Um, as we get more complex, we have valleys and that kind of thing, we're gonna end up with more and more exceptions to the standard component. So we'll have uh, you know angle cut ones and maybe those repeat so you can actually use a component multiple times. The other thing you wanna consider with something like this is creating a couple varied instances. So maybe one that's uh, you know a different color than the rest of them, or maybe one that has a split in there because you're showing modeling an older looking roof. So you have some jagged ends or one's longer or shorter. And then you can use the component window to select a few and replace it with that odd or variant shingle. So lots of options. Let me know if you like that. Maybe we'll go back in and create another video that shows some of those different ways to put those, you know, mix it up and make it look a little different than this or how to frame it a valley. Let me know if you guys like that. Let me know if this helped you. And if you did like this video, please do click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please do leave us a comment. This video was brought up because of a couple comments I saw on our forum, forums.sketchup.com. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.